Hey guys, it's Alan from Clangora, and today we're going to be talking about more pattern matching. And not just, you know, the normal pattern matching, we're going to really get into some interesting stuff. So let's go ahead and let's get started. Now, the thing I want to start with is that we can actually use pattern matching to validate that the data is in the proper format. Now, what do I mean by that? Well, in Elixir, a lot of the time, the data is going to be in a tuple format with OK in the data that we need or error in the data in the error reason. So with pattern matching, we can actually use that uh, style to understand if our code is working or not. Also, what we can do is we can actually deconstruct data types to get the data that we want and that we need. This is hugely powerful. And in a language, a functional language, we don't have loops like we do in normal languages. So we need to use the method of recursion to actually iterate through some data types like lists, tuples, etc. So let's go ahead, let's get started and show you some examples. So this is our previous code that we had before. And I'm just going to use normal IEX. And what I want to show you is the actual match operator. So you may be asking yourself, okay, what is the match operator? Well, the match operator actually is the equal sign. I'll show you how it all works. So let's say we have a variable a, and I want to assign it the value of 1. What I actually did was I used pattern matching to actually do the so-called assignment. Well, actually, it's called binding within Elixir and functional languages. So I bounded the value of y of sorry of one to the variable a. How do I know it's actually working? Well, what I can do is I can now say one equals a. And it's not that impressive, right? But now if I try to do two equals a, I get a match error. That's because on the left hand side, that's the only place where we can actually rebind variables. So if I flipped it, a equals 2, now a is set to the value of 2. Well, actually, it's bound to the value of 2. And this is quite an interesting concept, but now you need to understand that these, this equal sign is actually not doing assignment, okay? It's actually checking to see if uh, there's a match. And what happens is that on the left-hand side, if we don't have a bound or we, or we have a variable, Elixir will actually try to uh, bind this variable to the pattern on the right. That's how we can have a equal to one again. And then we can actually flip it around to check to see if they match up. So let me show you something else. Uh, what we can also do, so remember I talked about uh, deconstructing or getting the values that we want. So let's say I have a map. Uh, sorry, let's say I have a person. And we're going to use a map. And they have a name. Use my name. And they have an age. Uh, let's use my age, of course, I'm 18. And so this person has an age of 18 and name of Alan, right? Now, let's say I just wanted to get the age. Well, I can do this, of course, but I can also, which is interesting, is if I can actually set this variable, I'm showing you before that it's not actually set, I can use a pattern and say that, well, name, I'm sorry, age, I'm going to set that, I'm going to bind that on the age variable using the match operator. That's been set. I could do the same thing for name. Which is quite cool. And remember I talked about validation of data. Well, I can also validate that this data is actually correct. And how I can do that 
I could do name, and I can pin this, which is going to make sure that it's not going to get changed. And the pattern matches up. So we didn't talk about pinning, right? So here's the interesting thing. Remember I talked about A, I can set that equal to 1. But let's say I wanted to verify that what's on the left matches up with what's on the right without, rebound, without rebinding that. What I showed previously was pinning, right? So I can pin A and see if it matches up with 2. It doesn't match. And you notice that it doesn't get rebounded because I pin the value using the pin operator. That's how that works. Now, I also talked a little bit about recursion and iterating through, uh, say, like a list. So something else I can do is that I have some numbers. One, two, three. If I want to get the first number out, I can actually use pattern meshing to get that. So I can get the head of the list, which will be the very first number. And the rest of it is going to be the tail. And now you can see how we're actually able to iterate through the list. I can repeat that again. Sorry, I can do, I can do this. So I'm going to keep recursion down. Head is two, tail is that. Head. Three, and tail is an empty list. So we're going to talk more about lists and maps later on, but I just wanted to kind of give you more of an idea of how pattern matching can be extremely powerful. And by using this match operator, we can do a lot of different things. So this is the end of this episode, and I'll be happy to show you guys more next week. Subscribe if you haven't subscribed before, and I'll catch you guys next time. Thanks.